Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today we got some bombshell reporting on why Freedom Church was disfellowshipped from the Southern Baptist Convention. This is Freedom Church in Vero Beach, Florida. They were disfellowshipped by the SBC in uh, this annual meeting that they had last month in June. They were previously disfellowshipped in February. That was when it was announced, but they appealed their decision they testified on the floor and pled their case. Uh, a case of, was rebutted against them, and there was a very conflicting account going into the vote. Yet, nevertheless, the Southern Baptist Convention voted 96.46% to disfellowship Freedom Church. Did they make the right decision? What is the truth behind this story? And... Let's follow that. And that's what I decided to do. I covered it live. I covered the initial disfellowshipping decision. And now we're going to cover what was the truth of the matter. What was the right decision and what whether that was made or not. So before we dive into that, I want to let you know Evangelical Darkwood is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. Like I said, we reported the we live streamed the SBC and cover the story live. And I'm going to show you a clip of that in a second to set the backdrop and the context for not only my curiosity, but the conflicting accounts that we're going to be dissecting in this episode, in this video. So the least you can do is subscribe, but the most you can do is become a subscriber over to evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join. That's the most you can do. But again, we'll appreciate the subscription. We'll appreciate the likes and, uh, the downloads on the podcast and all that other stuff. Also check out the free evangelical dark web newsletter. Give you uh, Christian news in your inbox each and every day. So we're going to play a short clip of the two conflicting sides at the Southern Baptist convention, which should set the backdrop. Donald Stewart for three minutes and following his conclusion, the chair will recognize the executive committee and credentials committee for three minutes to respond. They weren't disfellowshipped ever a woman, I can tell you that. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for allowing Freedom Church to present our appeal. Freedom Church has a long-standing history with the convention as a cooperating church. Being in fellowship with the SBC is very important to us. Therefore, we have addressed the issue that deemed us as uncooperative. Oh, repentance. Although innocent of these charges, our former pastor wants the focus of Freedom Church to be on Jesus Christ, not on him. Therefore, on May 22nd, he resigned and is no longer involved in the leadership of the church. We now have an interim pastor who's a lifelong Baptist and pastors his own church, Vero Beach Baptist Church. He's been a lead pastor for eight years and before that an assistant pastor for seven years. In all other areas, we are in friendly cooperation. We have always had a faith and practice which closely aligns with the Baptist faith and message of 2000. We have appealed at both the local and state level and are doing all we can to reestablish our relationships with them. Freedom Church was deemed not to be in friendly cooperation with the SBC because, quote, we are acting in a manner inconsistent with the convention's beliefs regarding sexual abuse, that we have shown indifference by calling an individual as pastor who has an admitted pattern of sexual misconduct with women under his pastoral care. I believe they're talking First, about... our long-standing policies and practices show that we very much act in a manner consistent with the Convention's beliefs regarding sexual abuse. Second, at the time our former pastor was called, and even to this day, there have never been any allegations of sexual abuse brought against him by any women, anywhere, under his pastoral care or otherwise. This has been confirmed through an independent in investigation done by the Anglican Church of North America. Third, we have addressed the issue by using a local Baptist pastor until we can decide how to best fill the position. In closing, Proverbs 16 says, the lot is cast into the lap but it's every decision is from the Lord. At Freedom Church, Jesus Christ is our King, and we trust Him with all things in our lives. So whatever happens here today, we know the Lord is in charge, and there will be no animosity or bitterness in our hearts. 
We are all brothers in Christ. Okay. With our growing family ministry, New Covenant Bible College, Celebrate Recovery, and more than 50 baptisms in the last year, we are doing all we can to incorporate the Great Commission into the life of Freedom Church. Our hope is that after prayer and consideration, you will be led to vote no on your ballot, ensuring that Freedom Church remains a church in friendly cooperation with the He's Southern Baptist the Convention. Finish up. Thank you. I think he gave good speech, very contrite heart. I don't see a reason to not overrule the disfellowshipping. Now the chair recognizes the executive committee for a response. Thank you, Mr. President. As the chairman of the executive committee, I would like to recognize Pastor Dean and Sarah as the representative of the executive committee to respond to the appeal. Thank you, David. Your SBC executive committee and SBC credentials committee stand behind our decision to no longer consider Freedom Church a cooperating church with the Southern Baptist Convention. The Treasure Coast Baptist Association and the Florida Baptist Convention have acted to remove Freedom Church from their respective ministries on the grounds that the church called an individual to the senior pastor role who is biblically disqualified from ministry as a Southern Baptist pastor. The individual was investigated by another denomination which found credible allegations of sinful conduct and reported an admitted pattern of sexual misconduct with women under his pastoral care and supervision. Both the Florida Baptist Convention and the Treasure Coast Baptist Association provided Freedom Church with the confirmed and admitted sexual misconduct of the individual serving as the senior pastor, yet Freedom Church took zero action. The Baptist Faith and Message 2000, Article 15, provides in the spirit of Christ, Christians should oppose all forms of sexual morality. Article three of the SBC Constitution states signal. the convention will only deem a church to be in friendly cooperation with the convention, which does not act in a manner inconsistent with the convention's beliefs regarding sexual abuse and which formally approves its intent to cooperate. Freedom Church has failed on all accounts. Upon receiving notice of actions taken by the state and association, the credentials committee placed the church under inquiry due to its own due diligence. During a call, a church staff member hung up on a committee member. A letter of inquiry was sent to the church, but no response was received. A second letter was sent by certified mail. Confirmation of delivery was received, but no response. A third letter was sent by UPS. Again, delivery was confirmed, but no response was received. In fact, no response has ever been received from the church until after the executive committee's meeting in February, where the church was removed for its lack of intent to cooperate with the convention. The church is now deceptively claiming that the problem has been resolved because the pastor in question has resigned. In our opinion, that Freedom Church has no intention of removing this individual from leadership. In fact, the pastor's resignation has been described to the church as a strategic move designed to get the church back into the Southern Baptist Convention, while the individual remains in a leadership role and is only stepping back until things are settled with the SBC. Fellow messengers, this is serious business. In light of the information available to us, we affirm the actions of our Baptist partners like, at the local does he have evidence of that? state conventions, and likewise, as you affirm our decision to deem this church not in friendly cooperation with the Southern Baptist Convention. Thank you. I mean, that's his ability to virtue signal on so, this issue. So I got to be clear, just in my own reflection, like not everything I said at the time was correct, but you got to understand that there's no reason to trust anyone speaking on behalf of the Southern Baptist Convention platform. There is a natural sort of distrust towards these people who have redefined sex abuse uh, in their own image for their own purposes. So they've redefined that. They've considered adulterous women to be abuse victims. So you got to keep in mind the overall context within the Southern Baptist Convention. But nonetheless... It's interesting as it may seem, but Dean and Sarah, I do believe that the facts are on his side. So returning to the article that I wrote, uh, which is called Fast Times at Vero Beach, Why the SBC Disfellowshipped Freedom Church. So, yes, that is a movie reference. But as you can see, there is some salaciousness to this story and that is Richard Demzik himself he is the pastor at the center of the story that we're going to be focusing on 
And it is exactly that. Like, we're not exactly going to, you know, there's a lot of stuff here. So things might have started out peaches and cream for the small town Anglican priest, but behind the scenes was a marriage in disarray. Marital infidelity was among the dysfunction that killed this marriage. Demzik's wife would even be made to confess her adultery before the congregation. Yet, one witness stated that the infidelity was mutual and that Demzik was not made to confess his own. Nevertheless, in wake of the divorce, Richard Demzik was a partaker of hookup culture. This occurred both within and without the church. Richard Demzik had a propensity for violating the so-called Billy Graham rule, which would escalate as far as him using the priestly office to seduce female congregants. This became the subject of an investigation conducted by the Anglican Church of North America, the ACNA. Uh, the conclusions of this report were disputed on the floor of the Southern Baptist Convention. The messenger from Freedom Church, Donald Stewart, insisted that the investigation exonerated Demzik, while Dean and Sarah of the platform insisted otherwise. Representing the Freedom Church, uh, we already played that quote. And while it is true that seducing women as a pastor is not sex abuse, thus no, ne never have any claims of such been brought against Demzik, the ACNA investigation, a ANCA investigation, which could hardly be called independent because it wasn't the people investigating him were his bosses, did not exonerate Demzik in the slightest. A witness who has uh, seen the findings corroborates Dean and Sarah's rebuttal on the floor of the SBC. The ACNA, uh, ACNA uh, took action to remove Demzik. Following his stint as an Anglican priest, Demzik would go on the prowl. Uh, so this is Richard Demzik's Tinder profile. So we got a hold of some Tinder pics from Richard Demzik. As you can see, shirtless, pretty well, pretty much in good shape. Uh, and I'm going to read the bio for you. Uh, I love to dance! Exclamation point. I love my two cats and traveling. He has a comma there for no reason whatsoever. Serious intellectual conversation. S sounds good. Some crazy adventure. I'm in. A couple drinks and laughs. Sure. Dancing always and all night. Whatever that means. Watching football all day. No, thank you. Movies are a different story. Oh, and I used to be a priest. Long story. I'm happy to tell it over coffee. Or a beer. So, a uh, witness provided screenshots of Demzik's Tinder profile, which, in which he tries to portray himself as muscular, edgy, yet a sensitive guy. Uh, meanwhile, D Richard Demzik uh, went viral as a TikToker for going woke. One video that went particularly viral was when he filmed himself running through his neighborhood carrying a television to prove a point about Ahmad Aubrey. So now let's talk about Freedom Church. This is where they entered the story. So we have this woke, defrocked Anglican priest, and now we have Freedom Church. Freedom Church in Vera Beach, Florida is a small church which had a longtime beloved pastor, Roger Ball. Vero Beach is this kind of small town in which people know each other, and the reputational reproach of Demzik preceded him in a Christian setting. Roger Ball was a trusting man who believed in second chances. Demzik took advantage of that and was brought on as some sort of discipleship pastor at Freedom Church. And when the eventual time came for the congregation to vote on Demzik's position, Demzik took no chances and, and enlisted his friends and family as members of the church in short order to prior to the vote. So if the vote was on Sunday, they got him in like earlier that week to be member or last the previous week as members of the church in order to vote. Uh, very shady stuff. 
Demzik was confirmed as pastor and multiple witnesses tell Evangelical Dark Web that the new members brought in by Demzik did not remain in the church. So Demzik flooded the ballots with his uh, votes, his preferred votes to go his way. And these people left subsequently afterwards. So when Ball's untimely death occurred in November 2021, there was a leadership vacuum that Demzik uh, took the reins and of, of the church and expedited the, pa- the process to make him the official pastor. Three elders of Freedom Church resigned uh, in, in the wake of this. So let's talk about the shadow government accusations. Again, this sounded pretty far-fetched at the time, but let's dive into those. Freedom Church would be disfellowshipped by the Southern Baptist Convention in February of 2023 for failing to cooperate with an investigation regarding a pastor accused of sex abuse. Donald Stewart testified at SBC 23 that Demzik resigned on May 22nd, a, the, a Monday after he preached. This 11th hour action did not sway the Southern Baptist uh, of uh, did not sway S- Southern Baptist of contrition. Uh, moreover, Dean and Sarah rebutted uh, by accusing Freedom Church of lying in their testimony. And Sarah claimed that Demzik was running a shadow government in which the church, uh, you know, in the church. So. Richard Demzik was accused of running a shadow government in the church until the situation with the Southern Baptist Convention blew over. Multiple former members say at a minimum this is plausible. Some have claimed that Demzik is being retained as a consultant pastor, which is a position invented for Carl Lentz type of situations, because that's what Carl Lentz is kind of doing at uh, Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, Let's enter the Treasure Coast Baptist Association into the story. It's bewildering to think that a church would go through all this effort to maintain friendly cooperation with the Southern Baptist Convention. After all, Baptist polity dictates that the church, the local church, is autonomous and the SBC is not a hierarchy. Indeed, most churches do not even dispute the disfellowshipping decision made by the Credentials Committee. 2023 was an unprecedented year in which three churches did. However, there is one link that seems to make all this outlandishness make sense. The reputational reproach of Richard Demzik would eventually catch up with him as the local pastor or the local Baptist association would take an interest in this church. One former member told Evangelical Dark Web that the local association caught wind of Richard Demzik becoming gay affirming in addition to a woke pastor in a church that was not woke. So again, Richard Demzik is woke, but the pastor that hired him was not woke. The church that hired him was not woke. Evangelical Dark Web was informed that Treasure Coast Baptist Association, that is the local Baptist Association, has some sort of leverage on the church property that should Freedom Church go astray, the local association can assume control of the property. Going astray would include being found not in cooperation with the Southern Baptist Convention. Treasure Coast Baptist Association declined to comment on whether they caught wind of Demzik being gay affirming and whether they had control over the property. I did reach out to uh, Treasure Coast Baptist Association. They did respond to me by declining the comment at this time. It seemed pretty friendly. No reason to think that there's ill will. But they're pretty much the main players, I think, in this situation other than Richard Demzik himself and Donald Stewart and this elder named Mike. Uh, would be another minor player, I guess, in the story. So, Treasure Coast uh, declined to comment. However, Donald Stewart, I did reach out to uh, Freedom Church, and they did respond to me, actually. So, they told me, Donald Stewart told me, uh, what we have received is a legal notice 
of proceedings to remove Freedom Church from the property it has owned since 1987. This is what we believe is at the heart of the matter, and I actually agree with them. This is largely at the heart of the matter, other than the fact that Richard Demzik was grossly unqualified to be a pastor and all the baggage that came along with him. This would explain why Freedom Church went to great length to resolve its issues with the Southern Baptist Convention. Again, why would a local church uh, pastor resign if he was innocent? Because this local church needs to stay in the Southern Baptist Convention to really stay alive. They're not going to function without the Southern Baptist Convention. So let's talk about that. Uh, after reaching out for comment with Freedom Church, their website went dark. It is our analysis that this is likely due to money issues rather than avoiding scrutiny. As one attempt to load the page indicated a domain issue with GoDaddy. So something I saw was that GoDaddy website was down. They, they indicated that the domain was uh, no longer theirs, something like that. So the website was down. I think it's a domain issue caused by a money issue. Like they didn't pay their bill and now they have no website. That's my theory on what happened, but the website currently is not active. Indeed, Richard Demzik has not preached since May 21. A new interim pastor was brought on. Freedom Church resumed live streams to YouTube two Sundays ago. In this past Sunday, an elder, I believe his name is Mike, disclosed the church's gloomy financial situation. So let's talk about that in a second. We're actually going to play the clip from him. But I don't think it's unfair for Freedom Church to feel like we're under persecution right now. Okay? Despite Pastor Richard's resignation, we've been expelled from the Baptist uh, Fellowship and denied a path for reconciliation. With our current uh, membership and income, we can't really pay our mortgage for much longer. We're facing foreclosure. Uh, we've been denied our request to be able to sell the back part of our property that we're not using, which could pay off the mortgage and get us back to some kind of financial stability. And we also don't have the resources to fund that long and costly, uncertain legal fight to retain our, our property. So essentially, we're, we've been, we're being forced to sell our property to blow market deal. And the uh, elders really didn't see much of an option other than this. So this isn't physical death, and we're going to talk about that in our, our Bible examples, but I don't think we're wrong to feel that we're under persecution. So I think that this is a very timely message for this church, because I think that, you know, if we're really realistic about it, yeah, there is, there is persecution going on. So if something's happening to me, I don't want to react my way, because inevitably when I react my way, it doesn't go well, okay? Especially being autistic, it really doesn't go well, okay? Uh, those of you... As you can see, the chart that was on their slideshow, uh, I screen capped that, and he already explained that in all those bullet points in the video. Uh, in all of this, Freedom Church plays the victim, even insisting on Demzik's innocence until the bitter end. Donald Stewart even told Evangelical Dark Web, over and over, we have declared Pastor Demzik's innocence. We have asked repeatedly, verbally, and in writing for any kind of evidence that these accusations are true. To date, we have received none. The question as to whether Demzik is running a shadow government is moot. These are my conclusions. The church is in no position to bring him back into leadership anytime soon, much less compensate him. Freedom Church hired an unqualified pastor whose reproach soured relationships with the organization that has control over their property and ultimately the Southern Baptist Convention. They did so to their own demise. So that's how I conclude this report. Um, again, there's a lot more that I could have included, but I kept the standard tight. I kept the scope of it tight. And I had so much information. It's like I only wrote that many words, very few words for the amount of information and witness interviews and stuff that I was told about this church situation, but I kept it tight, kept it concise, and I solved the mystery. The mystery was the church property 
aspect to the story. I think that's that's the part of the story that makes it all make sense. Why would someone lie at the SBC convention floor? Because they have to in order to keep their their doors open. Now, why would they insist on Richard Demzik's innocence until the bitter end? Because I guess it's some sort of personality cult. That's what multiple people have told me about Richard Demzik's manipulative nature. He's big on guilt tripping people with second chances and, you know, real Christians are forgiving and stuff like that. So a lot of aspects of this story didn't make sense. I hope I helped make them all make sense. My name's Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. If you like this kind of content, subscribe if you're new. Otherwise, have a blessed day. We will catch you on the next one.